Okay, so we're in San Pedro, and we're not sleeping. Nothing should work. I mean, we've got these glass clear puppets shooting underwater, self-illuminating. You know, it's all prototypical. It, it really shouldn't work, but but yet here we are trying to make it work. And uh, the way the chain of command worked was this. We've got a million gallon tank. On top of this tank is a grid with 40 puppeteers trying to perform eight non-terrestrial intelligences exactly the way James Cameron wants them to work. There's a big six inch thick plexiglass window in the front of this tank through which we're filming. So the director of photography is down there. I'm down there. James Cameron's down there. It's all tinted off in black so there's no reflections on the glass. And we're on headsets so that we can communicate with Trey Stokes, the lead puppeteer, who then will communicate to the other 39 performers up there. And James doesn't want to wear his headset. He's just got, you know, he, he's mic'd. All right. And let's Leader's a little high. Right there, that's good. And let's roll cameras. Speed. Speed. And action starts swimming. So he's got two speakers above the tank that are booming the voice of God to these puppeteers, you know, screaming, you're doing it wrong, hire you fool, number four, I hate you, I'm gonna kill you, all these things, you know, because <laughs> he really didn't like whoever was doing number four. But uh, that's how it worked. And, and I'm standing right by his side, but yet I feel like I have to keep going back to the top of this tank to connect to these people and say, do it this way, try it this way, this is what he wants. So, you know, I didn't want to just do it over the, the headset. And uh, <laughs> the thing that really got to me is these very fragile puppets. At any moment, an eyelid mechanism could break, a breathing mechanism, a wing mechanism, and guess what? It's all over. The show goes down, you know, because we've got to fix it, we've got to pull everything out, and, 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 and who knows how many millions of dollars this costs an hour, and it's all my fault. What is that arm hanging off on number two? It broke. Oh, cool. So yeah, I was pretty nervous about it. So when we're doing the rehearsals, because Jim was very into rehearsals, I, I kept telling the puppeteers to not operate the fragile functions. Don't make the eyes blink. Don't make them breathe. Let's just do the general movements. That's all we really need to do. We need to get these aliens to fly up, do their graceful thing, fold their wings in, bow. No point in doing the blinks. They'll break, and guess what? It's all over, and somebody's getting by 20th Century Fox, and I guess that might be me. So I was really adamant about that, but I keep watching the rehearsals, and every time Jim would say action for a rehearsal, all the functions are working, they're breathing, their wings are doing everything, they're blinking, and I'm, I'm like, God damn it, it's gonna break, it's gonna break. Jim doesn't know, he doesn't care. He, he, and, and so I run up there. I keep telling him not to do this. I run up there at one point, and I screamed at the top of my lungs. Do not make these puppets do their delicate functions or they're going to break and it's all going to be over and we'll all be out of a job. And the lead puppeteer Trey looks up at me and he goes, no, 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 Mr. Cameron asked us to do all the functions, the blinking, the breathing, everything, because he really wants to see how these things work in rehearsal. And I lost it and I just said, you know what, I don't give a flying f what that goddamn f says. I'm telling you right now, if you keep blinking these, they're going to break and it's all going to be over. You're going to listen to me. And everybody's just like, oh, oh. like backing up. I'm like, what the f what the f guys? Like, I always yell at people. Why are they suddenly all, all panicked about this? <laughs> it turns out I still had my headset on, and it was, <laughs> it was booming on the speakers down there <laughs> in the tent where James was. So you heard every word. So suddenly, over the speakers on top of the tank, Mr. Cameron's voice comes on like the voice of God, Steve. I can hear you very clearly down here, and that's not the way it works on my set. Yeah.